Hi, everybody. I'm dealing with a cold, so my voice is even more boring than usual, so we'll have to deal with that. As always, I like to start with reminding everybody that this is about Abby and Libby and getting justice for them. Just a quick chat overview. I have slow mode on for 15 seconds between messages. There are all types of opinions welcome in my chats. Just please be polite to each other. Moderators will ban anyone in the chat who is being rude to anyone or commenting negatively about people related to this case, like on YouTube and stuff, instead of chatting about the actual case. People in the chat can click the name of an annoying person and block their messages. Type the at symbol plus the first few letters of someone's screen name to reply directly to that chatter, but your messages will be public. If I don't highlight your comment, it does not mean I disagree with you or dislike you. Chat with other people because I'm always busy doing whatever I'm doing. In the top of the chat box, it defaults to show top chat, but you can change that to live chat to see all comments. I try not to curse, but can't promise anything. I don't highlight comments with curses in them. Some initials I use in my PowerPoint slides are B slash R is for Baldwin and Rosie, the defense attorneys. NM is prosecutor Nick McClelland. LE is law enforcement. And PP is the Purdue professor who gave his opinion about the sticks at the crime scene. The reason I do these live chats occasionally is because people say they don't follow the case closely. So as new motions are filed in this case, I try to cut down on the words to just get to the most important parts. So today's live chat is going to start with about 20 something slides recapping what's been happening in motions in the past few weeks. March 21st, an appearance was filed by the prosecution. The summary is Stacy Diener will be helping the prosecution. I looked online to see what her job title was, and the only thing I found was White County Assistant Prosecutor. I know she was at the March 18th hearing. Next up, also March 21st, expedited request for transcript, hearing on motion to dismiss, and motion for contempt, filed by the defense. Gull granted this on March 28th, and the court reporter mailed them to Andy Baldwin. On March 22nd, request for recording of court proceedings by news media from WPTA, and WANE for the trial May 13th to the 31st, filed by the media. The summary was Judge Gull denied it. Judge Gull's motto is, you tried it, I denied it. Huh. It has not been made clear yet if Judge Gull is only rejecting these TV stations because she's going to maybe only pick one that's going to live stream it out to everybody. But since this denial of these two stations, she has also denied a request from one other station. March 25th, state's response to defendant's amended motion to compel and request for sanctions filed by the prosecution. The summary is, on January 30th, 2024, the defense was notified that videos are missing audio from uncatalogued interviews from Franklin Street Investigation Center in Delphi from February 25th through April 7th, 2017, which is a disaster. This is the same loss described in the Delphi Police Chief Mullen two-page letter describing loss of data from inserting Drive 1 into the DVR, which is a digital video recorder, to extract an interview file and a DVR malfunction reformatted the drive, thereby appearing to erase all files. The belief at that time was the lost files were interviews from April 28th through June 1st, 2017. I looked back at a March 17th filing by the defense and that stated it was from April 28th through June 30th, so I'm not sure who to believe on this one. Mullen was guessing as to dates of lost files when in fact Drive 1 was taken to ISP, Indiana State Police, for recovery effort from approximately June 18th through November 2022 for recovery efforts. It is now known that the video files on Delphi Drive 1 export are interviews from February 25th through April 7th, 2017, without audio. So why was it at Indiana State Police for over four years, up until a few weeks after Rick was arrested? Did police not think it was important enough to retrieve that audio or re-interview those people until after Rick was arrested? Just a reminder, this is in addition to losing the entire video file, both video and audio, from the interviews done February 14th to the 20th in the first week after the murders. Continued, Mullen created reports at the time regarding the two instances of DVR malfunction and testified at the March 18th hearing. Mullen found an email from February 23rd, 2018, communicating with ISP about the DVR, which is the state saying, we did not recently delete this stuff. This happened years before Rick was even arrested. 
If Baldwin and Rosie open the files containing law enforcement reports and run a keyword search based on the date of the interview, the results should direct them to who participated in interviews. The state has not compiled a list of who was interviewed because without audio, the files are not helpful to trial preparation. This audio loss was not intentional. But still, I mean, it just seems like so much incompetence is going on. In response to Baldwin and Rosie's request to compel whether phone dump data ever existed, the state replies, phone dump data does exist and it has been provided to the defense. All geofence data has been provided from the FBI CAST team. Next up, March 25th, order issued, filed by Judge Gull. The summary is, hearing held on defense motion to dismiss for destroying exculpatory evidence, matter taken under advisement to review the evidence submitted. Another order issued by Gull on March 25th. About a week earlier, the prosecution filed a motion to enter protective order for evidence gathered from the Indiana Department of Correction. Gull denied the request, but prohibits the defense from any dissemination of the personal practices of any deponent. So the defense is conducting depositions and interviews of the Westville warden and the two guards who were guarding Rick. So Judge Gull denied some of McClellan's requests, but said that the defense cannot disseminate any of the personal practices of any of those three guys who are interviewed. A third order issued by Gull, also on the 25th, included her rulings from the March 18th hearing. McClellan's motion for leave to amend charging information by adding counts three and four is granted. The petition for recusal of McClellan and Gull from contempt proceedings is denied. McClellan withdraws motion for all future pleadings and filings to be sealed for the court's review before being released to the public. Hennessy's motion for specific findings of fact and conclusions thereon granted with respect to the contempt proceeding. I think this means by the end of April, Judge Gull is going to have to issue a ruling and explain her reasoning for her decision regarding the contempt. Instead of the Allen County Court, future hearings will be held at the Carroll County Circuit Court. Judge Gull will review the contempt evidence and ordered David Hennessy to submit his post-hearing brief on or before March 25th. Prosecutor McClelland will submit a response brief on or before April 1st, which is next Monday. Then Judge Gull has 30 days to rule beginning April 1st. So on March 25th, David Hennessy and the defense issued their post-hearing memorandum from March 18th. This provided some insight about what happened on March 18th. The summary is, the entire process for pursuing indirect contempt was defective. Exhibit 1 was from December 1st, 2022, the press release by Baldwin and Rosie. Rosie testified as to three legitimate purposes of that release. One, it put an end to many requests from the media. Two, respond to information disseminated by Indiana State Police and family members. Exhibit T identified over 130 press conferences, press releases, or media disseminations. And number three, generate tips to assist with the defense of Rick, of which there were many that were very useful. Exhibit two was the accidental email to Brandon Woodhouse. It was a thumb drive map with a discovery organizational outline that did not identify anything important. It was sent to one person, not disseminated widely by Andrew Baldwin. The protective order was intended to prohibit public disclosure through media outlets. Continuing, Exhibit 3, a discovery receipt that was not admitted. Exhibit 4, the email string between McClelland, Baldwin Rosie, and Gull concerning the leaks and ensuing investigation during which Baldwin and Rosie cooperated. Exhibit 5 contained five pictures the state alleged were disseminated by Fortson after having received them from Westerman. Holman testified that he, quote-unquote, believed he had seen them at a deposition. I assume that's referring to the August 2023 deposition of Holman by Baldwin and Rosie. Rosie said two of the photos were not created or used by the defense. Thus, those two could not have come from Westerman. To the extent they may have come from Fortson, he had many other sources, as confirmed by State's Exhibit 6, which was 143 pages of Fortson's communications. The remaining three photographs were not offensive and would eventually be public. It was not dissemination of damaging information. The evidence disclosed many sources of the photographs that were never investigated. Continuing, the most egregious leak was the Ron Logan PCA, probable cause affidavit. Holman testified that he asked Barbara McDonald where she got it, and she said from Ron Logan. Holman testified the search warrant affidavit is never left with the person, just a copy of the search warrant. Thus, Barbara's statement had to be false. That affidavit also had murder sheet overlaid on every page. Holman never asked the murder sheet people 
about it and never did any further investigation as to the source. Exhibit 6, 143 pages of Fortson's communications. The state previously provided 145 pages, but never said what pages were removed or why. Not once did Fortson identify Westerman as his source or direct contact with Baldwin. See Appendix 1. The state argued Fortson saying he was going to Franklin connected him to Baldwin because his office was in Franklin. There was no evidence Fortson went to Franklin and no mention of Baldwin regarding his trip to Franklin. The state ignored Westerman's ties to Franklin. Only four references to Andy, a.k.a. Andy Baldwin. Number one, quote-unquote, they have Messer's phone. This next quote refers to she, which I think is the ex-girlfriend of this, quote-unquote, Odinist J.M. She tried to give it to Holman, but he ghosted her, so she gave it to Andy Baldwin. No source was identified for that information, and it was not attributed to Andy. Two, Andy had audio of the Purdue professor's statement. Three, Gull was setting a suppression hearing, but Andy is seeking clarity. Those three references did not identify the source of the information and was not attributed to Andy. Four, he's going to be with Andy tonight. There is no identification who he is or what they might be meeting about. There was no evidence of any meeting or a source. Exhibit 7, Baldwin's email to Gull saying, quote unquote, we want the leaker caught. He related what he knew and suggested the FBI investigate. Exhibit 8, Rosie's letter to Gull disclosed all that he knew about the leak and reported other more sensitive and damaging leaks for the court's consideration. Exhibit 9, Westerman's affidavit, which establishes what he did, was not known by Baldwin. Exhibit 10 contained 20 pages of messages between Baldwin and an unidentified person the state alleged was Westerman, contained Baldwin's mental impressions and work product, and failed to identify the other participant. McClelland read that exchange with advanced knowledge that it was communications regarding consultation on the case. McClelland never should have read it. Rosie testified about an in-chambers meeting when Gall said the parties could share information and brainstorm with anyone. The intention of the gag order was only to prevent press conferences, press releases, and interviews with media. Baldwin's communications with Westerman and sharing of his Frank's memo with him and others did not violate the gag order. Holman and Mullins were aware McClelland was exchanging information with the YouTuber Fig Solves, the most prodigious leaker of all. Gull did not allow evidence of those communications, so it's unknown what information McClelland disclosed. If Baldwin is to be held in contempt, McClelland should face scrutiny as well. March 26th, a few emails were sent to Judge Gull by citizens. The summary is various people wrote emails to her asking her to reconsider, allowing cameras in the courtroom. I agree that they should allow cameras in the courtroom. March 27th, temporary limited scope appearance filed by the defense. An attorney named Jennifer Auger, or if you took French in high school, Jennifer Auger or OG, I don't know, I took Spanish, will be assisting the defense with depositions of FBI agents, digital forensic issues, and courtroom examinations regarding the same. Related to this, also on March 27th, a verified petition for public funds filed by the defense. The summary is, it requests Judge Gull order the Carroll County Auditor to pay Jennifer Auger $100 an hour, which is the same rate that Baldwin and Rosie are getting as public defenders. The trial starts May 13th, hopefully. The amount of evidence is quote-unquote unprecedented. So this is a quote from the defense. One small but extremely important part of the prosecution's case and of Richard Allen's defense is the existence of digital forensic information, including, but not limited to, information obtained from the victim Libby German's cell phone, as well as information extracted from a cell tower near the crime scene, end quote. So what the heck does this mean? What is the defense leaving out of this? They're saying it's small, but extremely important, but also they're saying the prosecution feels this information and evidence is good for the prosecution, but also the defense feels it's important for the defense to show that Rick is innocent. This digital information from phones and possibly cars and video cameras around town is some of the evidence I'm most interested to see at the trial. Continuing on, the defense has tried to identify the state's witnesses for digital forensics and believes they were FBI agents and would like to interview them, but the defense has been delayed by the submission of pre-approval by the FBI, which is required to interview these employees of the FBI. 
Some agents are no longer with the FBI, which is causing delays. Walter and Rosie need assistance with this process and the process of vetting the digital forensic evidence. Also, March 27th, Gull issued another order. The summary is, the court having taken defendant's amended motion to compel and request for sanctions under advisement and having reviewed the state's response filed March 23rd, 2024, now denies the defendant's amended motion to compel and request for sanctions without hearing. McClellan stated on March 23rd that all the requests had been fulfilled or explained. Basically, we screwed up seven years ago. The final slide. On March 28th, Judge Gull spoke to WTHR about the trial. May 13th to the 15th, Monday through Wednesday, will be jury selection in Fort Wayne, which is Allen County. By Thursday, May 16th, she expects the jury will be sworn in. After that, they will be sequestered at a hotel near Delphi. Friday, May 17th, she expects opening statements and testimony to start at the Carroll County Courthouse in Delphi. The trial will be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday if there are no religious objections from jurors. Gull expects it to be completed by May 31st. I don't know about that. <laughs> Gull tried it. I denied it. For you nosy people, jurors will be paid $80 a day for the first five days, then $90 a day after that. whoop de doo The Allen County clerk sent jury questionnaires to 600 Allen County residents. So that's a summary of what's been happening over the past week. And finally, I'll get to your comments in the chat. Hi, everybody. Welcome. This live chat, usually I stop at around two hours and 59 minutes, and this one is going to stop by an hour and 30 minutes. Can you guys hear me? Um, please write yes. I, my microphone was muted while I was playing that recording. Since I'm so far behind on comments already, I don't want to talk for 20 minutes until I find out that you guys can't hear me, my incredible voice. <laughs> Happy Easter to anybody who celebrates Easter. Just waiting for one person to write, yes, we can hear you. Yes, all right, thank you. So here we go. Where are we? Hi, Glow from the Cold. Hi, everybody who's joining. Um, can you go over what was taken in the search of Rick's house? So I was, while you wrote that, I was looking in my PowerPoint slide for my live chat that has 342 slides. We're at, we're up to that point now. Unfortunately, my summary of that is in a separate PowerPoint file about the 118 unsealed documents from last June. So I was not able to pull up like the summary of that from memory, maybe 16 cell phones which some people say that's way too much, but he lived with his wife and daughter. We don't know what was on them. So I don't know. I'm not going to say that it's suspicious that he had 16 cell phones taken from his house. Some of the interesting stuff was a cartridge in a wooden keepsake box on, I guess, a dresser in his bedroom. Why was that in there? I'm not sure. I'm not saying it's suspicious, but we'll find out maybe at the trial what the prosecution thinks about it. Um, what else? I was interested to see, like, they pr pretty much took all of Rick's clothes. I, I was wondering, like, how did he exist without all the stuff that they took from his house? They took his jackets, his boots, his shoes, his clothes, his sweatshirts, a bunch of pair of jeans. Um, one of the most interesting things was a short build hat. I know in the PCA, it was not referenced that the guy that the four juveniles or the three juveniles who actually gave witness testimony in the PCA. It was not mentioned that the bridge guy that they passed was wearing a short build hat, but I know that Doug Rice, who used to go by bitter beat poet on Reddit, spoke with this one of the girls who the girl who said hi to bridge guy and he like just glared at her and gave her a dirty look. She said like to this Doug Rice guy that he later posted online. The guy she passed had a short build hat. I'm sure a lot of you have heard like it was a painter's type hat, which is a shorter like front than a baseball hat. And he had a hood. So police took some sweatshirts from Rick's house and a short build hat. I'm curious to know, would that match up with whatever this girl saw? Or obviously a lot of us have struggled to make out what bridge guy is wearing on his head in the bridge guy video um, from Libby's phone. 
is it hair? I don't think it's hair, but I don't know if it's a hood or some kind of hat. So other than that, I don't know. What am I forgetting about the most inter interesting things taken from Rick's house? I would say possibly his car. Were police able to take that computer data five and a half years later and show was Rick at CPS between noon to 1.30 or so or 1.30 to 4? That's huge evidence either way to show if he's innocent or guilty. Over five and a half years, it could have um, erased over or you know, that seems to be an issue with things being erased in this case. But he only lived a mile and a half from CVS where he worked. So maybe they were able to get that information. If not, one other thing about the car data is the defense said in their December 2022 press release that Rick went to the trails often. So even if law enforcement was not able to get the 2017 car data showing where Rick went, were they able to get the past year from whatever, October 2021 to October 2022? How many times did Rick go to the trails? Will the prosecution try to show that Rick stopped going because he was bridge guy? Or will the defense show that he kept going show that, so that means that he's innocent? Don't know. Hi, Peter. Good day, mate. Um, don't, uh, don't you have to choose to reformat? You said it yourself, the amount of incompetence, so-called, lots of emojis, yeah. Lots of incompetence. I, I, I don't know what's going on in this case, but I do not think that it was those um, various interviews were recently deleted to try and hide evidence. It seems like there was some kind of documentation showing back in whatever 2017 18 that they screwed the pooch back in the day hi ryan so ruckus is a i don't think he likes to be called a youtuber neither do i he does videos on youtube with sharing his thoughts have you seen ruckus quote unquote locking in predictions video i did watch it at two times speed. Um, he seems to be confident about the things he knows, but it includes blood, DNA, evidence, et cetera. If true, that would be big. I don't know where his sources are, so I'm not going to really comment on it. I would say some of the most explosive things that he said are that there was blood found at the, so there's this house at the end of the private drive that goes under the bridge. I'm sure you guys all know what I'm talking about. The, I guess the adults, like the couple, the married couple were away. And so their son would go there to maybe check in on the house. I'm not sure if he lived there full time. So this rumor, which just again, there's so many rumors in this case, just remember, this has not been mentioned by anybody official in the case, is that there was blooded droplets found at that somewhere on that property in a building, like a shack, a shed, a garage or something like that which don't you think it would be specific if it was a true rumor? I don't know that the blood contained Abby's and Libby's blood in a third person. I'm not sure if I'm getting that right. So I don't know at this point, I'm just like, hopefully we're going to find out starting whatever May 15th or 16th is when the trial is going to start. So lots of rumors, hopefully after seven years, we're going to finally hear some actual facts. Yeah, so a hi, Amy. Amy said, anyone heard rumors that there was there were blood droplets found at the Weber's that contained a mix of the girl's blood and an unknown male subject? If this exists, it could prove critical in Rick's defense. I, I, I don't know what to think about this, other than, like, why would Bridge Guy take Abby and Libby? Well, I, I know some people... Um, wonder if they were taken across the creek at any point or taken somewhere else and brought brought back through the night but why would somebody kill abby and libby then go across the creek again to this house at the end of the private drive and then by 3 57 p.m the driver said she saw a man headed towards cps that matched libby's video i don't know tom and i haven't seen you in so long nice to see you thank you for your generosity and for joining 
I think we will learn that they have had known circumstantial evidence since the 2019 presser, quote unquote, of new direction. He has been the guy, but not enough evidence to draw a warrant. I don't know. It said in the PCA that on September 21st of 2022 is when Tony Liggett was presented with a prior, I guess when law enforcement was reviewing prior tips, they, I guess, saw, oh crap, who's this guy on this tip who said he was there 1.30 to 3.30 and we never followed up properly. That 1.30 to 3.30 timeline on that tip again is one of the many things that is up for debate. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait for the conservation officer to give his testimony about why he wrote down 1.30 to 3.30. Obviously on October 13th, 2022, Rick told Tony Liggett, I was there noon to 1.30. However, months after he, he said that, and that came out in the Frank's memo that Rick had said that about that earlier timeline, I started thinking about it. Like, does this make sense that he could have been there from tw uh, 12 to 1.30? And I did a video about it like a month ago called, how did Richard Allen not see the four girls and bridge guy? And nobody has given no offense to anybody, but like thousands of people watched it. And I said, like, can anybody explain how these four girls who took a photo of High Bridge at 1243, which means they would have gotten to like the Freedom Bridge start of the trail around 1228 to 1230. How do they walk past all six benches, go to the High Bridge, take a photo at 1243, and then they never see anybody until they're leaving around 130 to 135. And Rick said he was there starting at 1205, or sorry, 12. He passed three girls around 1205 at the start of the uh, trail. Yet for 85 minutes, he never saw a single other person. So how did these people miss each other? He said he um, obviously was looking at a stock ticker and recently has come out that the defense is saying there's good information showing that there were other people at the crime scene and no phones belonging to Rick. So we're gonna have to wait and see what did Rick's phone show about him being either at home or at the trails at these various times and looking at a stock ticker. He also said he saw vehicles at the Mears parking lot. Yet, like I just said, after these uh, three girls, he said he saw at 1205 for the next 85 minutes, he never saw a single person. So where were these adults who parked their vehicles at mirrors? And why could Rick leave around 1.30 from CPS and a bridge guy who's wearing like similar clothes to Rick? Like Rick pulls out of CPS, like right next to the building. He said he parked next to an old building. It was at the CPS lot. I know some people want to say it was the old Farm Bureau building. The conservation officer wrote, he parked at the old Farm Bureau building never said Rick parked at the old, Rick said he parked at the old Farm Bureau building in town. I know I'm rambling. So I don't know. There's a lot of this stuff that does not add up to me about Rick telling the truth. I'm still, I'm not, I'm not certain that he is bridge guy. I don't see his face in the bridge guy video, like popping out, like, yes, that's definitely Richard Allen, but there's a lot of stuff that points towards his guilt. And there are some things that point towards his innocence. So I'm just waiting for the trial to finally Hopefully the jury is going to see a fair amount of evidence that's going to help them come to the proper verdict. I don't want Rick to be falsely convicted, but I also don't want him to get found not guilty if he did this horrible thing to these two girls. Tom and thank you again. When I listen to Doug Carter's old interviews, with his, this mindset, it will definitely give you his insight. I listen with my street smart mind and ignore practical something or other. Yeah, we haven't heard from Doug Carter. Can somebody check on Doug Carter? <laughs> After he said something about tentacles, I think they were like, no more interviews for Doug. Hi, Anna. Ruckus's uh, presentation is extremely interesting, but it adds many complexities. How many times did how many times did how many criminals cross that creek? Maybe that's why attorneys say Rick is innocent. Is the case too complex? 
Well, we know that from the Franks memo, there's this, um, well, they said that uh, Liggett lied because I guess Tobe Lesenby is saying he thinks there is two people involved and Liggett maybe said behind the scenes that he thinks two people are involved, but he told, he's saying that Rick is bridge guy and the killer, I guess, publicly and to the defense team and depositions. I don't know. I know some people think that the girls were taken away that night and how were they not found? But to me, they were not found. I know there's some, again, conflicting reports where they found like between 9.30 and 10.30. The official thing is around 12, 15 PM on the 14th. So that's like five hours of daylight for these searchers to have found them. So if they were not found in five hours of sunlight, to me, it seems somewhat logical that in darkness, they would not have been found for whatever, 12 plus hours. Hi, Sylvia. Yeah. Judge Gull, you tried it. I denied it. Hi, Simone or Simone. We are at 31 minutes. Um, only another hour, you guys. Sorry. But we all have other things, better things to do. I'm just looking for some different topics we haven't talked about. Ryan, I guess, talking about the blood in the house or at the whatever, the property at the end of the private drive. Yeah, it, I mean, it remains to be seen what this actual evidence is. As of this point, it's just been so many rumors for so many years. Aloha, Kevin. Thank you for your generosity. Hopefully you did well playing golf yesterday. <laughs> oh. Kristen wants to know, did Rick have to buy all new stuff? Yeah, I don't know. How does this work, you guys? At what point do they give Rick back at least some of these clothes? Have have police held on to his jacket? Obviously, I would assume, not assume, if there was some kind of blood or DNA from the girls, they're not giving it back, obviously. Well, Melissa said because they took Rick to, he didn't need them. No, that wasn't, they took the clothes on the 13th of October and they asked him again to come back on October 26th. Hi, Todd. One of the witnesses, yes, one of the four girls who passed Bridge Guy. Um, actually, that was not in the PCA, but yes, I guess privately, one of these girls said it was like a painter hat. Kevin, those that think Rick is 100% innocent haven't looked carefully enough at his timelines and those of the witnesses. He's boxed in with no way out. I'm curious how the defense will explain. Yeah, the trial is going to be interesting. Hopefully it will be broadcast for all of us to at least form an opinion based on exact testimony and evidence and not secondhand stuff. Peter says all of this quote unquote theater that the prosecutor judge law enforcement is intentional. Incompetence is a cover. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Hi, living vicariously in high definition. Um, there's this other rumor. Well, not a rumor actually going back to cold glow makes us cold or something. Sorry. I can't remember your screen name. There was a motorcycle cover taken from the October 13th search of Rick's house. There's a rumor that there were tire tracks on that cover that matched tire tracks at the end of the private drive or something like that. I don't know that that's never been the only the cover being taken has been officially discussed. Nothing official about tire tracks on it or marking like matching the end of the private drive or anywhere else. I guess some people are saying Rick drove a motorcycle there later to pick stuff up, which to me, I don't know if that, that makes any sense, but I don't make sense most of the time. So I feel like being on a motorcycle would draw so much more attention. Yeah. Like a jet ski, maybe he changed tires and they can match his old ones via the cover. I don't know that Rick ever even had owned a motorcycle. I've said previously, like is a five foot, 
four man really driving a motorcycle. I know five foot four women ride motorcycles, but he had a Ford Focus that was fairly new from like 2016. I believe there's been rumors that the motorcycle cover belonged to Rick's wife's brother who died maybe within the prior year of Rick being arrested. Sorry, I'm trying to figure this stuff out. Hi, Xtana. Hopefully you're doing well. Hi, Kristen. What do you think of the Odinists? I have PTSD from the Frank's memo. Um, you didn't watch my seven hour video on the Frank's memo. I don't blame you. Um, reading the Frank's memo, there are definitely stuff that was suspicious and pointed towards them possibly being involved. However, nothing concrete. I mean, I understand that the whole Frank's memo was based on the law enforcement from the Rushville area, the three police officers, Ferency, Click, and Murphy. So it was not like the defense was making up this stuff about Odinus. I think they did kind of exaggerate certain things. However, I've not seen really concrete evidence that any of them were actually there. I know that this one guy with the initials EF, I try to respect their privacy since they've not been arrested. Um, he supposedly confessed to two of his sisters. However, one of the sisters said he was rambling and incoherent during that confession. So I don't know. He said he spit on one of the girls, either Abby or Libby. He made some references to Abby. I don't know. I forget what he said. He's like, she's being annoying or something like that. He said he put horns or antlers on her head. And some people say in the crime scene photos, there are branches on the top of Abby's hair. Some people who have seen them have said it does not look like horns or antlers. Maybe some other people say they do. So it's now been, well, I don't know, six months since that Frank's memo came out. I'm almost certain that law enforcement reinvestigated these people after August 2023 when Holman was deposed and the defense said, we're going with this. We think the Odinists did it. I don't know. None of them have been arrested. And it seemed like at least four of the six men who were mentioned, as soon as that Frank's memo came out, they posted on Facebook and social media, and they seemed more angry saying that this being revealed by the defense ruined their lives and their jobs and their families are being harassed more so than them seeming to be like concerned that they're about to be arrested for their involvement. Even this EF guy who supposedly confessed to being there, he posted that he lived two hours away and did not own a car. And somebody said he had, one of the police officers said he had the like mental capacity of a seven or eight year old. And so EF, after this Frank's memo came out, wrote something on Facebook like, what did they think I did? Rode my turtle two hours to Delphi? So I understand that one of his sisters passed a lie detector test saying that he did confess, but obviously they've never been arrested. So I guess stay tuned. I know the defense has said they have significant evidence that these Odinist PW and BH were involved in the murder. So I look forward to the trial to see that significant evidence because what was in the Frank's memo was not significant to me. And it does not outweigh what I've seen against Rick and the questions that remain about Rick. Anna says, Odin's favorite berserkers were getting high in the woods when a couple victims ran by. Yeah, so who is bridge guy out of the six Odinists? It's definitely not BH or PW. Peter wants to know. I don't think so, Peter. Uh, did you did you ever verify what I mentioned last live? I must have missed your comment about the confirmed three other cult like like killings in the area. I've never seen that. I've never seen any white supremacists murdering white girls for a sacrifice. Hi, Purdue. Nice to see you. Kevin says, prediction, 30% chance hung jury, 25% chance mistrial, 25... Did you add these up before you wrote this, Kevin? Does this equal 100? 25 chance mistrial, 
25 chance Rick is guilty, 15% chance Rick not guilty, 5% 5% chance case further delayed, 100% chance appeal. My only hope for this entire case is that bridge guy is properly identified and held accountable. So that's my goal. Will it happen? I don't know. Based on the way, way this case has gone, I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be a guilty verdict and everybody's like, okay, there was enough evidence that I saw. Let's move on. It's not about us. It's about the family members and even Rick and his family members having the right verdict come about. Glow from cold. All right. Thank you for clarifying your screen name. I think it will be a short trial, three weeks. The state's case seems fairly simple and straightforward. One person acting alone. Yeah, so they upgraded Rick's charges from just being bridge guy to being the killer. I don't know about it being three weeks. Gull thinks it's going to be over, I guess, by the 31st of May. I don't know. I think there's like a lot of testimony that's going to happen from witnesses, experts. We'll see. Anna, investigators have mentioned photography as part of the crime. Maybe the motive was to take dirty pictures in a shed, but the girls ran and resisted. There were, yeah, I don't know that investigators, are you sure that they said that in anything official? I've heard rumors that there was like tripod marks at the crime scene, like three prongs from a tripod where you would put like a video camera or phone or something like that. I don't remember seeing that officially about photography. Oh, well, I think Ives, the former pro prosecutor, maybe said the crime scene looked like something that you would take a photo of. I don't know if that's what you're talking about, Anna. We, From what, um, I guess, the crime scene photos that came out, it was obviously Libby was not wearing any clothes. Some of Libby's jeans and her sweatshirt were put on top of Abby's clothing. Each of them had branches on them. And then there's this tree that may or may not have an F written on it. So what, what else could there be at the crime scene that somebody would want to photograph? Hi, Marissa. I hope there's a plea versus a hung jury for sure. I don't know. Some people are saying they don't think the trial is going to happen because Rick is going to do a plea deal. I don't think so. If he's gone this long, I assume him to want to be able to at least have a trial. So I, I don't see Rick saying, I'm guilty. Let's make a plea deal. Hi, Unseen. Uh, that's not true. Sorry. <laughs> the lady saw him on the bridge looking at his phone and another saw him leaving. I mean, I just try to clarify some things that are maybe not totally correct. Witness four saw a man on platform one. I've never seen anything where she said he was looking at his phone. I'm very interested to see what her testimony is going to be. Rick said he was on platform one, but apparently 90 minutes earlier than bridge guy was standing on platform one. And witness four, AKA the lady, she said she saw a 30, no, sorry, a 20 year old with poofy hair. So I'm very interested to hear a lot of this perspective about this witness for another saw him leaving. Um, there's this 357 driver who said that she saw a man who matched Libby's video. However, in the Frank's memo, part of the reason of the entire Frank's memo was because the defense is saying that that woman, the 357 driver told Tony Liggett that the man she saw was wearing like a tan or like a light beige. I forget the exact um, phrasing. She said the guy was wearing a lighter jacket, not dark blue. So the defense was saying, well, Liggett lied. And so he lied with that um, information. And so the entire search of Rick's house should be thrown out, which I thought there was enough evidence to get the entire search. So it's going to be interesting to hear what the 357 driver says at the trial. 
in the Franks memo, they kept referencing her 2017 interview. However, later on in, in further years, did she say, okay, yes, it was like a dark blue jacket and it could have been blood and not just mud. I think we have to wait to hear the final testimony from these people and not just rely on snippets from various motions and stuff. Anna thinks the trial will be very short, has been said three days for jury selection. Day four, the jury sworn in and opening statements made 13 minus four equals nine. Uh, no, it's three weeks total from Monday through Saturday. So two full weeks is six plus six is 12 plus two is 14. Maybe you're off by one, right? <laughs> I'll delete that later. Hi, Lisa. If you had to decide right now, based on what we know, which is very little, I'm sure, would you say he's guilty? If I had, if I was on the jury, based on what I've seen, I'm leaning towards guilt more than innocence, but I would not feel comfortable sending him to jail for the rest of his life based solely on what I've seen so far. However, I think there's a lot more stuff that's going to come out at the trial, not just actual concrete evidence, but testimony from various people that's going to paint a bigger picture about whether or not Rick was bridge guy, at least, and maybe not the killer, but at least bridge guy. I don't think anybody should be saying 100%. I know Rick is guilty or innocent without seeing everything that's going to be at the trial, both from the prosecution and the defense. Hi, Sub Rosa. Is everyone innocent and set up for murder or just Rick Allen and Koberger? Is Huberman innocent too? No, I think Koberger and the Long Island serial killer are definitely guilty and they're absolute pieces of crap. Definitely their PCAs had a lot more concrete evidence that they are guilty. Yeah, they're horrible people. So I'm waiting for Rick's uh, trial to see more evidence about whether he is or is not guilty. I'm highlighting this just for your screen name. Alice James loves all things crochet. Happy Easter. <laughs> Hi, CJK. Two guys doesn't mean both were there physically. Two can still be involved. Well, my thing about that is I know there's a lot of people saying, oh, psychically, um, physically. Um, it's been a year and a half since Rick has been arrested. So where are these other people, these other actors who were involved? I know the other actors comes from Nick McClellan from a month after Rick was arrested or like three weeks. However, as some smart people pointed out, was that because police already matched Rick's DNA with the crime scene and it did not match up? So they thought Rick was bridge guy but they wondered if it could have been somebody else whose DNA was at the crime scene. When McClelland upgraded those charges um, in January 18th, maybe, to show that Rick was the killer, is that because they found out who that DNA belonged to? And maybe it was a friend of Abby's and Libby's who had touched the sweatshirt. That was just one possible thing that I've thought of previously. So I don't know if it's gonna come out that the DNA at the crime scene was a random person and not involved in the crime. Because obviously if it shows like it's a male DNA or something, how is law enforcement going to explain that away? We've never been told exactly what kind of DNA it is or where it was found. So again, stay tuned for the actual evidence and not just rumors. Tom, sorry, I missed these. Honestly, eyewitness accounts have been done away with since the 90s. Just listen to the differences in the witness accounts. That won't hold in court. I agree. Like, even the three girls who passed Bridge Guy around 130, like, 
some pretty wildly different descriptions. Tom continuing, I think the Odinist approach is to throw a reasonable doubt. Defense lawyers don't want to pinpoint an exact person that could have an ironclad alibi. Well, if I'm a member of the jury and you want me to believe that white supremacists murdered two white girls in a ritual, like compared to the evidence against Rick, like you're going to have to present, as the defense said, they have significant evidence that PW and BH were involved in the murder. So you're going to have to present some pretty significant evidence that PW and BH were there. I don't know. We'll see. As far as I know, at least those two guys have um, alibis. This trial will last the full three weeks. There's a mountain of evidence that we have no clue about. I pray they convict the right guy, no matter what. I agree with uh, convicting the right person. Thank you, Prita. Hi, Mustang. Yes, justice for Abby and Libby. Hopefully it's going to finally come in about two months or so. Marissa, in Marissa's opinion, Rick could have shrunk in height during the five years. What you think? Well, his temporary public defender, Libredo, said in January that he's five foot six. I know there's, there's this huge debate for since he's been arrested. How tall is he? Does he match Bridge Guy's frame, his height? I know various people have done various um, analysis. I think Bridge Guy's boots are uh, small. In some of my previous live chats, I've shown a comparison of Bridge Guy's boots to a photo taken of Rick around summer 2022, a few months before he was arrested. And I do think his feet could match the size of Bridge Guy. And I just, I do think his body type can match Bridge Guy's. Sub Rosa, the PCA is not supposed to have everything. All PCAs are cherry picked. Yeah, the PCA was just to search Rick's house. It does not include everything they found. Hi, Luna L. Fay. Was Rick clocked in at work on the 13th or was he off? I'm almost certain he was off that day. He said he went to the trails noon to 1.30, so... I believe these CVS workers, some of them work weekends, so he would have had an occasional weekday off. I'm curious to know, what did he tell his wife? Did he text her in the morning or the previous day? Did he say, I'm going to go to the trails tomorrow at lunchtime? I know it sounds stupid, but if he says he's there at noon to 1.30, what did he do for lunch that day? Did he eat at home before he went or did he eat at home at like whatever 145 or two i've said previously if he stopped at like mcdonald's in delphi he would have a credit card receipt that would show if he bought food at 145 then he should not be in prison we'll see sub rosa odinus on motorcycles hi rose if i described rick Allen, my first statement would be really short for a man. Yeah, so at least one of these th uh, three girls who gave testimony about the man they saw at three, sorry, 130, who is almost certainly bridge guy, whoever that was. One of them said he was not taller than five foot 10. We're back on this height thing. But if Rick, Rick said he was wearing a head covering that day and a hood. So if he's five foot four or five foot six and you put a hat on and a hood on, on top of that, how many inches would that add? Two to four inches? I know one of the girls said he came up, to, she came up to around his shoulders, I think. So it remains to be seen to hear all this different testimony. I know one of the girls outside of the PCA, she told Doug Rice that he was short. And Doug Rice said, even before Rick was arrested, he said, if and when Bridge Guy's arrested, he'll be in his 40s to 50s resemble Jimmy Dale Duval, who is a local sex offender who does look like Rick, and he will be short. Like those are the three main things. And I mean, it does 
match Rick. I'm not saying that it means that Rick is guilty and bridge guy, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Hi, Scott, you're back. I thought you hated me. How will Nick explain the 3.57 p.m. driver saying the man she saw was in a tan jacket? You know the one that said it was muddy but never bloody? The flat-out perjury to achieve the PCA. Well, as I said, I, you may have missed this. Um, I said that Frank's memo kept referencing her 2017 interview. So did she say in a later interview, did she use the word bloody or did she say the jacket could have been blue it remains to be seen but it's in the pca it did say that woman said the man she saw on 300 north headed towards cps right before four o'clock matched libby's video so why would she say he matched libby's video if he was wearing a totally different jacket there's been debate for many years what is that brown thing around bridge guy's waist is it some kind of like fanny pack or a brown shirt or sweatshirt hanging out. Hopefully in Libby's video, the 43 second video in the PCA, it says at the end of the video, a ma the man is seen and heard. So how close of a video does it show bridge guys jeans, his hands maybe showing a wedding ring or a certain kind of ring? What is around his waist? Does it show a brown sweatshirt? Will Rick, Rick's wife or something say he did own a brown sweatshirt at, around that time? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Anna, has been reported that Rick never owned nor rode a motorbike. His brother-in-law's wrecked bike was salvaged. So did her um, Rick's wife's brother die in a motorcycle accident? Peter watched all seven hours of my Frank's memo video. Thank you. You're one of like three people. Hi, Patricia. Do you think that Judge Gull is not as capable as she believes herself to be? <laughs> and this very high prof hello, this very high profile case is overwhelming her. We're at 57 minutes. I'm going for like another 30 minutes for anyone who's counting. I guess maybe I'm the only one who's counting and hoping it ends as soon as possible. Um, she doesn't seem to be following procedures, which to me, it's like this whole case is really eye opening to me. It's my first like true crime case and it's not good on every single level. Um, I don't know why she's not following procedures. I know she blamed her clerk for a few different things, but still, it's like, well, I don't know. I have no like allegiance to her. And if she got replaced by a former Supreme Court justice, who I know some of them are, they're like special judges, which could be assigned to this case. So I would not be upset if she was replaced by somebody more capable. What, whether that's going to happen or not, I doubt it. The Supreme Court did say she was wrong for taking Baldwin and Rosie off the case, but they did not replace her. So hopefully it does not go back to the Supreme Court saying, like, can we get rid of everybody? Tom has a bunch more stuff. I wonder if Odinists leave bullets at crime scenes. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Glow from cold. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Tom, search teams probably destroyed a lot of footprints. Again, that remains to be seen. Talking about, I guess that was Glow from Cold asking about what was taken from, from Rick's house. I know there were two boots, pairs of boots. One, I'm almost certain, said a dirty black pair of boots that were 6.5, size 6.5. Were there footprints taken from the edge of the creek, like the north, north edge of the creek, that matched Rick's boot footprints that were taken. There's one other pair of boots, but they were 8.5 size and I forget what color they were. Tom, Jimmy Dale Duval told us they knew who it was. They always said he was local hiding in plain sight. They never veered from that. I watched all seven hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, 
if you want to see who this guy is, Jimmy Dale Duval, D A L E, I guess this is his middle name, D U V A L L, no E. Search Google, Google for that name and go to images, and you should see what he looks like. One of the girls who passed Bridge Guy around 130 said he, the guy they passed, looked like that. If you think that looks like Rick, Okay, if you don't, okay. I, I think it, he does look like um, Rick. High Cubic Z Painter, former public defender, Libredo has a lot of confidence in Judge Gull. Yes, he did say nice things about her. Scott, how will Nick explain Todd Click's quote unquote onus report? Well, he'll maybe present evidence showing alibis for all six of those people that were referenced in the onus report. I'm curious to know how much of the evidence did those three officers, Click, Ferency, and Murphy, have access to that the Unified Command had access to. Obviously, what they said was very convincing that they thought the onus were involved. And even in the Franks memo, it said the FBI Behavioral Analysis Unit said that Odinists were involved in the murder. So we'll see what happens with all this stuff. You really think this is going to be over in 15 days of a trial with all these people testifying about this stuff? Kristen watched five minutes of my seven hour and five minute Frank's memo video. Sub Rosa clapping back. <laughs> How will you explain Rick's confessions? Odinists. Yeah, o the Onus guards did not force Rick to call his wife and confess. I know some people think that. That was a fake quote that the defense came up with, just like to clarify. And somebody else, I think it might have been ex Tina. She's very, she's smarter than I am. She may have said this: these April 3rd confessions where Rick, well, not confessions, don't want to trigger people. They were called admissions where the prosecution said Rick admits several times that he killed Abby and Libby. Not that he was bridge guy and somebody else did it. He apparently says on these tapes, he killed Abby and Libby. So I'm almost certain at the trial, they're going to show the video of Rick's cell. His cell is under 24 hour video surveillance, no audio. But if he makes a phone call, obviously they can hopefully sync it up later. If you need help, let me know. I don't delete files. Um, um, my point about ex Tina saying the defense said Rick lost his mind. Essentially after five months, he was fine. The first five months in solitary confinement at Westville. Somehow on April 3rd, he lost his mind and started acting schizophrenic and delusional, which caused him to call his wife and say, I could, I killed those girls essentially, which the fake quote ended with the four words, I killed those girls. So I'm curious to know, did he say that phrase? And the defense is trying to take attention away from that phrase. So they have the audio recordings of all of Rick's calls. And the prosecution was saying he was making up to two phone calls a day. So what, what was his tone of voice on April 2nd, April 1st, March 31st? I think it's important to know for the jury to hear, was he like slowly declining mentally in the days leading up to April 3rd, either as a reason for that confession or to say, um, I don't think so. He was fine on April 2nd, April 3rd, he meets with the defense intern and investigator. What is this video going to show for, of a cell? Does he come back with papers that the defense team just gave him? Does he read them? appear to like freak out and then he picks up his tablet and calls his wife like what is his tone of voice is he crying acting like he's revealing this huge secret he's kept from his wife or does he truly sound like he's not making sense time will tell because that is definitely going to be played at the trial there are rumors of other confessions that rick has made to mental health and medical professionals at Westville, whether that's going to be allowed as evidence or if it's even true remains to be seen. 
Kevin says a source is saying Click and Ives, Robert Ives. So Click is one of these three people who investigated the Odinus. Robert Ives is the former prosecutor who, like Diener, was like, yeah, I'm out of here. Um, to testify for the defense. Uh-oh. We'll see. Luna, why do you think the defense went to Odinist rather than Keg and Klein? Because they had an 85-page report where these three officers said they thought the Odinists were involved and the FBI crime, whatever, FBI behavioral analysis unit said Odinists were involved. And law enforcement investigated Keg and Klein for six years or seven years almost yet they have never charged him with anything. So it seems like there's no evidence against Ron Logan or Kagan Klein. That's why the defense is going with uh, the Odinist. But as some people said, like at first on April 5th, when they the defense filed that motion to get Rick moved out of Westville, they were saying he his confession to his wife was because of mental illness. And then later it was because Odinists were threatening him. So why the change? Tom continued there. Tom, um, you've given me way too much money, but thank you. I'll highlight your comments without having to give me money. Thank you. There is exculpatory evidence that has been destroyed, just like the video interviews. I think the weight was them excluding everyone else, not just neglect. Well, unpopular opinion. Uh -oh, get ready to be triggered. Yes. Like, it's totally incompetent and wrong for law enforcement to lose two plus months of interviews. However, if it turns out that Rick truly is the only person involved, it seems like none of those interviews other than witness four within the first few days saying who she saw on platform one and maybe a few other people. So ignore that the first week. Yeah. The first week of uh, interviews being lost is a disaster, but from, like April, May, and June, they were not investigating Richard Allen. So anything that they were doing had nothing to do with proving whether or not Rick is the killer. So I'm saying if he is the killer and the only, only one involved, all those like looking at various other people, like the local pastor and all these other people who are various suspects, that had nothing to do with the crime if it's only Rick who was involved. And I'm not, I'm just not, I'm not saying like, I don't think it's a big deal that they totally screwed up multiple times. Good morning, Humanimal. Click didn't seem to remain committed to Odinus report. I wouldn't bet on Click saying I would have proceeded with Odinus arrest. Well, he did feel confidently enough to contact McClellan to say, have you seen this Odinus report? Hello, this Odinus report. He felt like the search, or not the search warrant, but the arrest warrant for Richard Allen was not as convincing as the evidence that he collected on these Odinists. But as I said before, I have not really seen really convincing evidence or whatever significant evidence that these Odinists were there and they did this ritual. Wait for the trial. Yes, I will be live streaming the trial, unfortunately, every day if um, it is live streamed. Todd, bridge guy's five foot four, so is Rick Allen. That narrows down POIs dramatically. How many other five foot four men were off work Monday on the trail, 130 to 330, wore a blue jacket with a hood and head cover, owned a 40 caliber gun, supports Rick is definitely a bridge guy. Well, I don't know that we know for sure that bridge guy's um, five foot four. Rick said he wore a blue or black jacket that day. They did take a blue jacket, a blue Carhartt jacket on October 13th. However, every Carhartt jacket I've seen has a thick material that would not really show the outline of that item in Bridge Guy's front pocket, which to me, the Bridge Guy's uh, jacket material is more like a windbreaker. So I think I said like an hour ago, um, did that jacket taken from Rick's house match Bridge Guys? There was at least one video where Rick's wife on Facebook posted where she sneaks up on him 
in this in their car like in the thanksgiving before the murders it's a dark blue jacket but to me it seems like a heavier heavier material than bridge guy so i guess it remains to be seen did rick own the bridge guy jacket glow from cold do you know anything about what Rick told the warden? Yeah, the warden is my pen pal. No. <laughs> um, no. The only thing that we've really heard about what Rick told the Westville warden, again, we don't have the transcripts from any of these uh, court hearings other than the October 19th rumble in the jungle in Gull's chambers. Um, but at June, the June 15th hearing was when this these quote unquote confessions came up where I guess Rosie, the defense attorney, started the entire hearing saying, I don't remember all these exact quotes, something along the lines of confessions, non-confessions, incriminating statements, non-incriminating statements. We'll deal with that at the trial, something like that. There were reports, I'm almost certain, at this June 15th hearing. McClelland may have, I guess, maybe brought up that Rick wrote five or six letters to the warden. Again, there may have been like a confusion about five or six because it may have been like five or six total confessions or five or six different people that he talked to. So I don't know if it's five or six letters just to the warden or what. But from what we heard, as soon as McClelland brought that up, Rosie interrupted and I guess they had some kind of sidebar with the judge and they stopped talking about what Rick said to the warden. I don't know if those letters are going to be presented at the trial. I don't know what they're going to contain. If it turns out that Rick is confessed or confessed not only to his wife and mother, but to like four other people on different dates, not just around April when he supposedly became delusional and schizophrenic. I don't know. What, what do you think? Is that pointing towards Rick's guilt? To me, as a jury member, some of this stuff just adds up more and more if it is true that Rick is somehow involved. But again, there's stuff that shows that he's innocent and not involved. So wake me up when the trial's over. <laughs> Taco Bell time. An hour and 12 minutes. I'm, am I really going to stop in about 16 minutes or 18 minutes? Probably. How far behind am I? Only a half hour. <laughs> oh. Anna, nothing supports white supremacy like killing two white girls who would likely produce white babies in a few more years. Darn, the white race got diluted a little more. Yeah, the defense started out their Frank's memo, their work of art, saying it was a ritualistic sacrifice by white nationalists or something like that. So what are they going to do to prove that at the trial? And will they even use this Odinist defense at the trial? I'm not going to be in court. Misbehave is screaming, there is no shed. All right, thank you. <laughs> Peter says, and the, I guess, Purdue professor that's been in question was approached to confirm, comment, opinionate, I believe on some of those at least three times. Well, it seems to come out recently that the Purdue professor may have said the defense mischaracterize some of his statements again we have to wait for these people and their official testimony at the trial not these various secondhand and thirdhand interpretations if i'm a jury member and you're going to try and tell me that odinus killed these girls and left three branches on abby and four branches on libby um sorry there's a bug that went right in front of my face um you're going to have to show me which rune was this Odinist trying to replicate on Abby and on Libby. As far as I've seen, 
the professor never said which rune was on Abby and which rune was on Libby. And what does it mean? Stay tuned for that. High lead with love. Rick is not going to plea, plea out. He already has a guaranteed retrial. Well, if there's really strong evidence that shows that he is guilty, is he going to try and appeal? I guess we'll find out. Either way, if there is strong evidence or if he's going to accept his fate if he truly is guilty. Tom says they triangulated his height with some next level technology. They knew he was five foot four to five foot seven. I have followed this case extensively since 2017. I've heard so much false data and a lot of validated info. Well, the official wanted poster said, I think it said five foot six to five foot ten, which I'm sure the defense is going to say, well, if Rick is five foot four, why was he under the official poster? height the minimum height but as i said before rick even admitted he wore a hat or a head covering and a hood which would add at least two inches hi ann what with all the speedy trial stuff no way rick is going for a plea in my opinion rosie and baldwin have promised him they're going to get him out of jail by the summer. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully the trial is not going to get delayed even further. Anna, what could make sense of witnesses versus Rick is if he looked for fish from the bridge, then went to the creek bank via the 505 trail. That could explain a lot. Um, I don't think so. Sorry, Anna. <laughs> From what Bitterbeat Poet said, he at some point said th these girls only went on the 505 trail, not to the high bridge. But how do they take a photo at 1243 of the high bridge without actually being there? So again, we'll have to wait to find out the exact path that these four girls took between approximately 1230 to 130. Also, did Rick in his October 2022 interview with Liggett specifically say, I only went from CPS to the Freedom Bridge Circle, started on the trail, went directly to High Bridge, stood on Platform 1, watched fish, and then walked directly back on the trail. We know uh, Bench 6 starts at Freedom Bridge, I'm oh, sorry, at Mirrors, inter, uh, Mirrors Intersection area. And then there's five more. He said he watched the fish in the PCA and then went and sat on a bench. It does not say officially that he went skipping through the woods like Little Red Riding Hood or that he went down the 505 trail. So stay tuned for clarification. Humanimal, did Rick Allen make any stock trades that afternoon? Did he buy or sell anything? Well, if he did, that would be great for evidence to show if he did it during the crime, the time of the crime, although yeah, I mean, at two o'clock, who knows what he was doing? Is there evidence on his phone that he was home at two o'clock? Hi, Cam. Did you ever follow up on the discussion with investigators had with Kagan concerning, quote, we have the money you sent to Libby. Was this a lie or any truth? I can't help but uh, think follow the money. Some people have said that Kagan or actually I think Kagan may have said, you mean the pictures I had where I show like hundred dollar bills or something like that. I'm very interested to know, did he send money to Libby? If so, for what? I'm almost certain Kagan has said he only sent $10 to one girl for food, which is like two chalupas from Taco Bell. So. <laughs> Hi, Cora Jean. Indiana is a great state. All right. But you need to like follow procedures more, please. 
Yeah, there's, uh, to be honest, I've encountered some horrible people from Indiana in this case. However, I have encountered a lot of more very nice people from Indiana. From Australia, it's the other way around. I'm kidding. I do appreciate everybody joining from all around the world. I know there's people in Europe, Australia, the US, Hawaii. So thank you for all sharing your opinions and stuff like that. We're at an hour and 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes more, or maybe a little bit more. Only 400 people watching. Glow from cold, quote unquote, other actors could be someone or someone's who lied for him. Yeah, people have wondered if maybe Rick's wife knew that he was the killer and could she be charged for not coming forward and saying, yes, that was my husband who is bridge guy. But I mean, police never came to their door for days after the murders, weeks, months, years. So even if she thought, could that really be Rick? First of all, do you, th would you expect your spouse who you've been married to since 19 years old? They were married for 25 years at the time of the murders. I'm sure she would think there's no way Rick would do the, this to two girls. And if he said to her, yeah, I talked to police and I told them it wasn't me and police never come to arrest him, then I guess as time goes by, she thinks it could not be him. I'm sure she and her husband or her mom and Rick's mom and her daughter are also very interested to see what kind of evidence they have against Rick to see if he truly was this person. Lead with love, um, McClelland had to upgrade because statute of limitations ran out on the kidnap, which was over five years uh, later, I think. Yeah. Rose, why is Detective Holman changing witness statements? I don't know, I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see what these um, people say at the trial. The witnesses and Holman. Todd says other actors might mean on social media who were connected to friends and possibly Anthony Shaw slash Kagan who assisted Rick in knowing when to go to the trail. Correct. That could have been a thought in November, 2022 within a few or like five weeks of first looking into Rick, but the defense said recently, or maybe it's in the Frank's memo six months ago, no social media accounts connect Rick to crime, the murderers, or other suspects. Hi, Ali Go Rhythm. Is it true Rick's wife signed the visitation of the funeral with her maiden name? I've heard that twice. I've never seen are you, what are you saying? There was this um, Libby's funeral at the gym or something had a sign in sheet or a memorial some sheet and Rick's wife. I, I've never heard that rumor. C for P. I've been looking into A, B. She was working the Marathon gas station in Delphi that day, originally claimed to have seen Libby's grandfather at the gas station that day buying Gatorade wearing a blue jacket. Libby's grandfather is not bridge guy. Like, hello, sorry. <laughs> like there's nothing on this, even Abby's grandmother, or sorry, Abby's mom said, there's nothing on the audio that indicates it would bridge guy was Libby's grandfather. Like they would say like, Hey grandpa, what are you doing here? There was like absolutely nothing pointing towards Libby's grandfather being bridge guy. 
misbehave believes Rick Allen is bridge guy. I have not seen enough evidence of showing that he was bridge guy. I'm waiting to hear hopefully more audio to confirm whether or not Rick's voice seems to match bridge guy's voice. They obviously have high quality if they did not delete it or erase it of Rick's October 13th and October 26th, 2022 police interviews, plus all of these phone calls he's made. Does it sound like bridge guy or does it not? I don't know. We'll see. Hi, the silver leaf. Something from the home is what really sealed the deal with the cops and bridge guy slash Rick Allen. What was it? <laughs> Hi, little butterball. How are we going to know about evidence from the trial if the trial is not shared with the public via TV or video? We'll have to wait in for lunchtime and dinner time for the people in the courtroom to hopefully take good notes and not pass along bad information. I don't know. I know in this one Lori Vallow or something, at the end of the day, they only released audio only. I would be fine with that. I would prefer not to have to read through hundreds of pages of transcripts. We'll see. Good evening, Peter. Todd says the only actual difference in the descriptions from the three juveniles, juvenile witnesses is blue versus black clothes. Yeah. All right, let me finish. That's all. And they all said they only saw one man. That's not a significant difference. Well, one said it was a duck canvas jacket. One said windbreaker. Um, one said he, he was not taller than five foot 10. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what they say at the trial, but it's been over seven years. So like, how much are they going to remember? I've said previously that even since they were in the woods and the shadows of the trees could have made somebody looking quickly at bridge guy's jacket, think it was black, but the faded jeans of bridge guy, I don't think even in the shade would appear black, but who knows? I mean, it's like, are you really looking and examining people's clothing as you're walking by and also look talking to your friends and looking at your phone? 127 am i really going to stop in three minutes no i'll go to 140 and that's i swear that's it <laughs> anna rick was not arrested until two weeks after a first search of his home i have to think police found something that led to the arrest and charges well we know that the examination of his six hour gun took until at least the 19th or something I forget the exact dates when that his uh, gun was at Indiana State Police. And I know there's a huge debate. Is this gun science re realistic or is it reliable? I mean, it seems to be more reliable when somebody actually pulls the trigger and the cartridge and the bullet goes through the entire gun. However, as a basic person, which I am, if I'm on the jury and the prosecution says we test, this is a rumor that seems to be fairly reliable, but it's never been like officially confirmed, but it's highly reliable. We were talking before about this house at the end of the private drive and the son who lived there, there's a rumor that he had a six hour gun similar to Rick's and that police confiscated it for several months at some point between whatever, 2017 and 2022. It seems to me that he was never arrested. So that analysis came back saying his Sig Sauer did not match the unspent round found two feet from the girl's bodies. If I'm on a jury, it does mean something to me if police say we tested this one Sig Sauer from a local resident and it did not match the crime scene. But in October, 2022, when we got Rick's six hour and tested it, it did match the crime scene. And it's the, even the analyst said it was subjective, but it was also su subjective when they tested this other guy. So 
It could, I mean, sway me to at least be one other thing that points towards Rick being involved. However, I've said before, even if that's like 80% reliable, that science, like if there's a way to examine a million guys' guns six hours, it's not right that 200,000 of them would be falsely convicted as being involved based on this um, 20% unreliability of the analysis. So we'll see. <laughs> Hi, Ruckus. Are you causing a ruckus with your live chats? <laughs> if um, moderators, if anybody in the chat is being a clown, just click their name and write hide from channel. I want to hear other everybody's perspective, but I just want people to be polite to others. Sub Rosa, this will be going on for another six years at least. I mean, in addition to Rick getting a fair trial and being released if he's innocent and his family having that at least closure, to me, I think often of the families of Abby and Libby who have had to like wake up and go to bed every day for over seven years wondering who is Bridge Guy? Will he be held accountable? So for them, I'm just hoping this trial finally provides some kind of answers for them. High tax cut. Chemistry of the unspent bullet versus the keepsake, uh, the keepsake box bullet will be big. Yes. Peter, what do you think they got from the house that makes him guilty? I don't know. There, there's this in the supposed leaked index of evidence. There's supposedly a confidential interview with somebody at AutoZone in Peru, which is where the clients live. And Rick, I think, I think Rick, Rick Allen lived in Peru or in Mexico, Indiana at some point. There were rumors that Rick Allen worked at the CVS in Peru before he worked at the CVS Delphi. So why would police want to talk to somebody at AutoZone? Was it an employee asking if Rick maybe bought certain car parts to replace any blood that was in the trunk or something like that. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate and say Rick is guilty. It means that he went to AutoZone and replaced parts in his car because it had blood. But is that a possibility? It could be. Stay tuned. Todd, also, when shown the photo of Bridge Guy, the witnesses have said that is who they saw. Correct. The 357 driver, witness four, and these at least three of these girls who saw a bridge guy around 130, all, according to PCA, said that matched bridge guy, even though they gave a variety of uh, descriptions overall. They said, yes, that's the guy that they saw. And I, I do think bridge guy did park at CPS because in 2019, April 2019, they had this huge press conference, which to me, we finally learned that it seems like that only happened because witness four went to police in March, 2019 and said, I'm frustrated that you guys never put out this sketch of this younger guy that I gave within a few days of the murders. And I said, it was a 10 out of 10 matching who I saw. So it seems like nobody ever came forward after the April 2019 press conference to say I was parked at CPS. So in conjunction with this 357 driver, it does seem to match up that whoever was bridge guy, he did park at CPS. Also, why did Rick not come forward when Doug Carter said, we're looking for anybody who parked at CPS between noon to five? Is it because Rick said, he, or Rick thought he already told the conservation officer within a few days of the murders. So he did not feel like he needed to remind police again. I don't know. Would you remind police if they're looking for anybody parked at this remote lot that you were there and this murder remains um, unsolved? I would, and I'm not just saying that to make look uh, make Rick look guilty. We'll see. Hi, she elf Johnson. 
a six foot tall guy wouldn't have jeans that pool at the ankles that much. Yeah, it seems like Rick's pants, his khakis and stuff also bunched up around his uh, feet. Yes, I agree, living vicariously. Hopefully Libby's video, it does not, I'm almost certain it does not show his face of bridge guy, but hopefully something to either show if Rick is, is or is not bridge guy. Tom says he is only hoping to avoid the death penalty. Um, well, people have wondered at what point will McClelland possibly bring the death penalty into consideration, and it does not seem to me like he's going to do it. Anne says, I think the full Bridge Guy video is going to be fascinating to see in trial. Well, I don't know that we're going to see it. Um, I don't want to see it. I would want to see like maybe a close-up of Bridge Guy's clothing to see what that brown thing was around his waist. And if there's any like further details about like what was going on with his uh, jacket and stuff. But I think law enforcement has said it was very sad to see the um, facial expressions of possibly Abby having fear about what what's about to happen or what previously happened. I think Libby only took that video because something previously happened. There's been debate and people, hardly anybody agrees with me and that's fine. I think Bridge Guy, after Platform One, he went to the South End because to me, if you're going to kidnap somebody down the hill, you need to know if that's a viable place to kidnap somebody and to know if there's anybody down there who would possibly foil that. I've showed before, Libby's vid, uh, Libby has a photo of Abby and also she uploaded one of the entire bridge facing the south end. And to me, it does look like there could be a shadow at the end, which could be bridge guy. I know people disagree and that's fine, but did they pass whoever bridge guy was or wherever they passed? It seems like it had to be within a few feet before this bridge guy video. So whether it was like 10 minutes before or 20 minutes before, it seems like there had to have been some interaction that scared Abby and Libby and caused Libby to want to document this man approaching them. Hey, hey, <laughs> Caroline. Lead with love. The FBI in Indiana covered up for Dr. Nasser for years. Cover ups are real. Um, Dr. Nasser is, I guess, a doctor related to a gymnastic program or something like that. Peter is very upset. How are we going to see everything keeps going missing and destroyed? I don't know. I, I'm just hoping that there is, despite all the law enforcement incompetence and supposed cover-ups and conspiracy theories, I just hope there's enough evidence to present to the jury for them to make the proper decision. Was Rick bridge guy or not? Tom made some money betting on basketball. Go Purdue Boilermakers. What? <laughs> Hi, Shelly. I don't know that I've heard this. David Hennessy, who's working with the defense, he's an attorney, said they they found a shell casing at Rick's house that matched the bullet they found. How do you get around that? I don't know if you're talking about this unspent round found in the keepsake box, or there was various ammunition taken from Rick's house. So I'm curious to know, did that match what was found at the crime scene? Just like the general brand and stuff. Let me skip over a bunch of comments, sorry. 
139. I said I was going to stop. Uh, I'll go to 159. I swear that's it. Oh. Me? People come up with the weirdest like conspiracy theories about me. Hi, Baja, a.k.a. Barbara. I learned that Baja means Barbara in our member chat yesterday. Thank you for spending seven hours. Well, why are you even here, Keith Kellogg? Any moderator want to hide Keith from the channel so he doesn't have to bother in the future? I'm totally fine with that. C for P, why confess to a crime when there's no evidence against you? The confessions are bunk forced. How, do, how is it forced for Rick to pick up his tablet on video and call his wife and say, I killed Abby and Libby repeatedly? And how do you know there's no evidence? He met with his defense team on the same day. I don't know for sure if this quote unquote confession was before or after that meeting. It seems to me like it would have been after, but I could be wrong. I'm always wrong. So did he get evidence that day that made him say to himself, there's no way I can deny this evidence. So I'm going to have to finally confess to my wife and my mom. Stay tuned. I would not make um, comments or comments like that without knowing the full evidence. Hi, Marshall. Nice to see you. I'm a plant by McClelland. You're stupid. Like, seriously, that's not true. So I know it's not true. You're stupid. Why are you listening, Keith Kellogg? Like, go do something better with your time. You don't know how to even properly spell your with an apostrophe and an A. So you're wrong about spelling your and you're wrong about me being a plant. Has any moderator? No, like I'm an aloe plant more than I am from a McClelland. People are so stupid. Uh oh, and disagrees. That's okay. I think there is a good chance Rosie and Baldwin will be successful in having confessions ruled inadmissible as unduly prejudicial. Well, I, I want the jury to have access to as much information as possible to make the correct verdict. If a man is calling his wife and saying, I killed those girls, I, as a member of the jury, I want to hear, why is this man t saying that to his wife? What up, Gen C? Hi, Unsilent Bob, 420. If the trial ends and Rick is acquitted because evidence gets tossed due to defense technicalities, do we, the public, still get to see all the evidence the prosecution had on Rick? I've never followed any case and newsflash, I know nothing about nothing. And I've never acted like I know anything. I'm just like a random person like all of you. And I host these live chats because people say they appreciate it. So I'm not acting like I know anything. So you'll have to ask like people in the chat. Hopefully they answered you 30 minutes ago. All right, I have to skip over a half hour. I'm still, oh my gosh, you guys are talking way too much, but hopefully you're being polite to each other other than Keith Kellogg. <laughs> I'm just looking for some comments we haven't talked about. Hi, Malibu. Do they stock fish in that area? Makes more sense that Rick was into fish, not the stock market. Yeah, some people have said that there's an app where you can see if like a local creek or pond or something stocked fish into that body of water. And people said, well, maybe Rick was looking at this app as he walked towards High Bridge to see if there were going to be fish. and. I'm not doubting that there it's possible to see fish from the bridge. However, it seems more logical that it is when the water is clear. And even if you look at the helicopter footage from the day after, like the day the girls were found, like it's not clear at all. So how long is somebody looking over platform one down into Deer Creek 
hoping to see fish. Was Rick, how detailed did Rick get in his October interviews on the 13th and the 26th? Cryptex says that was real money sent by Kagan, not pictures. All right, well, what was he sending money to Libby for? Yeah, I, well, I don't know if you're talking about the $10 was definitely real to that one girl, not related to the Delphi case. It was just another girl that Kagan was catfishing. Hi, Owl on the Prowl. This is a circumstantial case, but I've seen people get convicted for less. Rose went and looked, and you can see fish from the bridge, yes. But when the water is extremely cloudy, how long are you looking over the edge of platform one? Good morning, Lux. Previously, I used to say, like, um, I give like times of my chats and I'd write Australia. And somebody wrote, um, Australia is kind of big. There's more than one time zone. So I try to use Sydney to be more specific. Al on the prowl said, Rick's wife was under the impression Rick was cleared. Yeah, well, police never showed up. So I don't really blame her for not calling in saying that looks like my husband and sounds like him. Maybe it's not Rick. Maybe he does not sound like that. Lead with love. Indiana has the spousal testimony privilege. Rick's wife can refuse to testify. Correct. But will her phone calls with Rick be included as evidence and not just the April 3rd quote unquote confessions, but other stuff like what else has Rick been saying? in these phone calls that either the prosecution or the defense can use to try and show if he's innocent or guilty. Can somebody answer this before we end in uh, 13 minutes? Is evidence in a murder trial released to the public even if it results in an acquittal? We'll see. I don't know the answer, sorry. Anna says anything presented in court should be available to the public, except in some cases involving juveniles. All right. Thank you. Mary makes a good point. If it had been her grandfather, there would have been no need to videotape bridge guy because she would not have been afraid. And as I just said before, if witness four sees bridge guy on platform one, and then she sees Abby and Libby two and a half minutes later on the trail, um, bridge guy and Abby and Libby had to have passed each other before this video. Marissa, we have to have a Taco Bell reference every chat. Dorito Supreme tacos with extra tomatoes deliver to prison cells, please. I've tried Dorito. I like Taco Bell. Everybody knows, but, um, I don't like the Doritos one. Sleuthy Goosey, it was the gun. I'm not sure if you're doing that, uh, what you're referring to, sorry. I must've missed something. Sleuthy Goosey, I'd be cool with audio coming out. Yeah, I mean, I just wanna hear what's presented. Not that I have anything to do with this case, but I know there's people who have spent a lot more time and years like wondering about this, I think, a lot of us just want to hopefully get some answers and justice for Abby and Libby and even for Rick and his family. They obviously deserve it also. Hi, Wom. I can't, I can't with you in that photo. Lead with love is bringing a non-electric steno machine and can type 300 words a minute. Oh my gosh. Gull is going to say you tried it i denied it and she's going to smash her machine on the ground and arrest you anna if rick is found guilty he should be convicted of stupidity if it is found he kept the gun that was used in the crime well 
I've wondered if whoever bridge guy was, as I say, I don't know that Rick is guilty or bridge guy, but would Rick even know where he dropped that unspent round? Did he like pull back the trigger or not, not the trigger, the slide on the gun to intimidate Abby and Libby to whatever, go down the hill and then maybe again a second time to get Libby to take her clothes off or whatever. I don't know what happened with Abby. At what point did it this unspent round pop out? Did he put it in his jacket pocket? And maybe when whoever bridge guy was, was moving around the bodies and doing the branches, did this cartridge fall out? Yet bridge guy did not know it fell out two feet from the bodies. So he may have thought, oh, it fell out somewhere else that would never be found because police never mentioned it in the five years, Anna. So he maybe did not know that he needed to worry that there was even like the capability to match it up to his gun and stuff. I don't know that some people want to see this one, but she elf. Middle-aged men are virtually invisible to young teen and tween girls. I don't think they'd be looking at Rick that closely. Yeah, bitter beat poet said they were looking at their phones and stuff. So we'll have to wait for their testimony. Marge in charge says it is the totality of the circumstances, not each piece alone. Correct. Hi, Otto Mobile. Libby's grandfather was at work. Cameras at the plant easily proved if needed. Yeah, I don't think her grandfather was bridge guy or involved. Hi, Kay. My friend said she dated short men because they're all right. I'm a, I need to read these things before I highlight them. <laughs> Anna, hopefully, I need to. I didn't read this one, but I had to highlight something else. If in almost six years, none of the witnesses suggested the guy is CVS equals bridge guy, I will have a lot of questions. That's that's a very good point. However, do we know if these girls went into CVS? These three girls, there's obviously four girls, but I guess the youngest sister did not see bridge guy enough to even really give a description. But there are some various other conflicts with their testimony in the PCA. Because one of the girls said he had like brown and gray hair, which obviously would match up to Rick. However, bitter it was not mentioned in the PCA, but Bitter Beat Poet said this girl said Bridge Guy had a scarf up to his nose and he had a, a hood and a hat. So even if Rick was Bridge Guy and he had a goatee at the time, where would this girl even notice that he had gray hair, like his eyebrows or what? So how would she even know that he looked like Jimmy Dale Duvall? And how would she like have a overall idea of what this man looked like if his head was, um, his hair was covered and the bottom half of his face? So that's good points, Anna. Sorry if I totally butchered what you're trying to say. Ann says, I'm hoping for this smoking gun piece of evidence to be the social media digital records showing that Rick at some point in some way reached out to Libby under an alias. Almost certain the defense said previously in the Franks memo, there's nothing on social media that connects Rick to Abby or Libby. Hi, missing people. Um, my name is Missing Comments. Um, your comment was 20 minutes ago. And I'm stopping in exactly six minutes, sorry. I'm sure some people are like, yay. <laughs> Thank you all for joining and sharing your thoughts. When is my next live chat? Who knows? When there's stuff to talk about. When my, when my PowerPoint slides get to about 20 slides. Lead with love. Have any of these witnesses identified Rick Allen? It'd be interesting to know if any of them will get on the stand and say, yes, after Rick was arrested, I recognize, yes, that I really do believe that was the man I saw. However, as I just pointed out, these four juveniles around 1.30 did not really get a great view of Bridge Guy's face. Witness four was from 50 feet away. 
I have a bunch of issues with that possibly. Um, and the 357 driver was a driver. So like how fast is she going? And like looking at the face of this man. And as I forget who it was said, I'm almost certain these uh, five women, females, were Delphi area residents who possibly went into CVS and they never said, oh, that guy is the guy I saw. And will be interesting to see how the defense team costume Rick for the trial. Of course, he'll have a righteous pastor sort of suit and tie, but wondering about facial hair and or head hair. So you think maybe Rick will shave, I'm guessing here, will Rick shave his goatee if the um, witnesses are going to say the bridge guy had a goatee? We'll see. Hey, Peppermint. Malibu says pants bunch up because the waist has to go around a fat beer belly. Yeah, there's obviously been a deba debate about, like, what's the weight of Bridge Guy? His jeans seem to be pretty loose, and his jacket is loose also, and there's stuff in, I think there's items um, in front of it, like in the jacket. So we really can't see, like, what his midsection and chest area looks like, and even his neck is totally covered. So I don't know that we have a great idea of... Um, bridge guy's overall appearance. Thank you, she elf. You're going to force me to go to Taco Bell after this. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. Three minutes and that's it. Hi, big fish, small pond. I would assume the cops could do their job. Yeah, you would assume. Like my, oh my God, I had a former CEO and I once said, I assumed, and he said, Tom, never assume. It makes an ass out of you and me. And I was like, and then he walked away and I was like, I roll. Anyway, oh, what's the end of your comment? Sorry. <laughs> I would assume, although I left and he did ask me to come back with a 30% raise. So I did something right. I would assume the cops could do their job and would still have my statement if I had if I had came forward, I guess you're at the point where I said Rick should have come forward after Doug Carter said, anybody who parked at CPS, please come forward. Also, if he didn't know what the CPS building, they didn't show a picture or anything. That's correct. It's never been stated that Rick said Farm Bureau building or CPS. The only thing I've seen is in the PC, uh, no, it's in some something. <laughs> it said he in October, 2022, Rick said he parked next to an old building. To me, there's only one old building, and that's by CPS. And in the Frank's memo, the defense essentially said that Rick parked next to CPS. And Doug Carter messed up and said February 14th, not the 13th. I don't know. We, we could debate all this stuff all day long. But I'm stopping in 90 seconds. So I'll do one more comment. As I say, thank you to everybody for joining and sharing your opinions, except for Keith Kellogg. Um, I'm not a plant. I'm not working for um, anybody, the defense or the prosecution. All I care about is justice for Abby and Libby and for Rick Allen to get a fair trial. Uh, anything final? Yeah, Big Fish and Small Pond and I disagree, but we're at least polite with each other. Anything in the next 60 seconds to anything we didn't talk about. Should I just end it? <laughs> Let me see if I can find one more. I will stop with this nice person from Indiana. As I said before, there's been some horrible people interact with me online from Indiana, but there are some very nice people like Deb's True Crime Notebook. She does true crime on her channel. You can check her out. She does updates on the case more than I do more frequently. So check out her shorts. It's at one hour and 59 minutes and 28 seconds. 
happy Easter if you celebrate Easter. Hopefully this trial will happen in a month and a half. Hopefully the truth will finally come out either way, whether Rick is, is or is not innocent or guilty. That's all I've ever cared about. I'm not planted by anybody. Goodbye. I don't know when my next live chat is, but I'll let you know. <laughs>